without question the challenge as far as the next generation of people related to computers will be to bring the equipment closer to the hands of the everyday guy. I think this, the businessman, wherever he is, he will have access to information about his company, not only nationwide, but internationally speaking. And through the communication satellite network, it's becoming yearly more practical to think in terms of linking a whole industrial complex internationally. We're seeing it today. At Hughes Aircraft Company, we have a computer center located at the airport facility. Through the central artery, we service a great number of remote areas. They can cross-pollinate, they can use the same library functions that are in existence on the computer, and they all are capable of extracting that information or pulling the information and submitting it back to any one of these remote geographical locations. Now, the degree of flexibility that we've been able to achieve by the remote, ca uh, remote capabilities and the 60 teletypewriter terminals uh, is a very unique one in the respect that a teletypewriter can actually go through the central computer and redirect its output to any large bulk media conversion process at any one of the sites. For instance, at our Tucson facility, we can actually design an engineering requirement or manufacture an engineering requirement and at our Canoga Park facility, we actually design the missile problem itself. We can redirect the actual engineering design to Tucson through the computer. So what we really have here is a communications network that actually brings all of our remote locations together. The same thing occurs on the 60 remote teletypewriter terminals. A um, scientist can actually design his requirements, do his programming, and redirect his input to bulk media conversion at the local uh, site or at the computer center for later courier transportation to his location. So what we have is true interchangeability through 60 locations plus six large computing uh, locations, which really are only a 115, but they appear to the user as a large computer. Now what we have available is the thing that everybody has been talking about for many years, a computer at everybody's fingertip. We had a three-part goal in the Alton Area School District when we entered into the use of computer in education. One was the teaching of technical computer programming. The second was the improvement of instruction in mathematics and math-related science. And the third was the direction of learning or direct learning by means of computer-assisted instruction the transfer can be made to the point where the electronics do the presentational and preparational activities, and then teaching will, in my opinion, become a true profession. We've done problems like payroll and inventory, and uh, I like it because it's a challenge. Every problem's different. Within the Altoona School District, we have 11 remote terminals using our computer, which includes five in the high school and two in each of the junior high schools in Altoona. We also have 17 other school districts within the state of Pennsylvania using our computer. Me and another girl made a program for dating, so we decided to try it on our own without any help from anyone else just to see if it would work. So we did, and it did. Uh, in our algebra course, we've gone to the computer terminal in Roosevelt and learned how to work the teletype and to call into the main computers and how it's done in the basic language. We always start them with the basic language, and by the time these people get to Algebra 2, they are working with the more complex computer programs. We also have lately begun computer programming with the seventh grade top students, so that by the time they're in ninth grade in junior high school, they have had three years of computer language, so that by the time they get into senior high school, they can go on into very, very complex problems. This year we processed about 10 million returns with our 352 stations. Ultimately, we can process about twice that many as we put all the rest of the returns on our system. With the installation of the GE system, we now go directly into the computer by entering data through a key station terminal, which is linked internally to the GE 4020.
These computers are, of course, processing the data at a much more rapid rate than we've ever been able to do it before, at a much more accurate rate. When the data is entered through the key station terminal, it is stored on drum for the purpose of doing some checks to make sure that all of the data is there that is required for that particular type return. Once that is determined to be the case, it will then go out to another storage media which will hold it until they want to verify it. Well, the operators that enter the documents to begin with are really communicating with the computer, and the computer will give them messages telling them when they've done wrong things. And when they're completed entering the documents, then the verifier will pick them up, and she's able to correct mistakes on the spot without going to another person for correction. And I look at the screen and see if my information's right, and if it is, I release the bar, and if mine is incorrect, well, I correct it, and then release the information. It is apparent that there is a lower air rate because of the environment of the terminals. The girls feel more at ease, Keen, because it's a quieter environment. It's a more conducive to good production, concentration. It's more interesting to them. Northwestern is a full-service bank, and as such, we want each of our customers to be a full-service bank user. Every major accounting operation in the bank is on the computer in one form or another. We rely on it for the information flow as opposed to clerical staff. We're a correspondent bank-oriented bank at Northwestern, having just short of a thousand correspondent banks. We have banks from a $600,000 size all the way up to the billion dollars that we are using the same identical service and using this database approach that we're now embarked on. Certainly we're going to have a, a different sales tool for our correspondent banks. I will have a tool that they will be able to use that I can say to them, here's something you've never had before, this customer profile, this history of an account at a fraction of a second's notice you will be able to inquire, find out balances, a ready reserve amount owing by this customer, what his potential is, what other applications or services of the bank does he now use. And we see the integrated data system, the GE, is a valuable marketing tool because we will know readily more about our individual consumer than we do today. Our best prospect, we believe, is the individual who doesn't bank with us now as a consumer, but is most like our present customer. We want to know more about our consumer, how he behaves, what number of services he uses. But built into the IDEA system is the capability to do it now, tomorrow, the week after. The more we know about our own customers, the better our odds are that we can message to the guy that is most like them that isn't a customer of ours now. And that's what the name of the game is. We sell approximately 75 to 80,000 barrels a day of petroleum products. This includes gasoline, naphtha, jet fuel, and diesel fuels. We have a lot of our own service stations, approximately 228 service stations that we operate throughout the southeast. We actually operate through various terminal locations and we own approximately around 12 or 13 of these terminals and then the rest of the product is delivered through exchange points. When the product is loaded onto a transport, a manifest is prepared. One copy is sent to the Houston office for billing. We process approximately 12 and a half, 13,000 invoices a month and with this great volume we have to be able to compile information for tax reports and sales analysis operating statements and naturally financial statements. The information that's taken off of the manifest is typed onto an invoice at the same time a paper tape is produced that goes into the computer that we use. What this has done for us here at Triangle, it's taken all the manual work out of the data processing department. The computer does the sorting, the calculating, and the reporting. Anything that is billed at Triangle today will be posted to the system tomorrow. There's a time element here, and this is where the computer plays a great part. Pillsbury Research has programs which allow us to predict shelf life of our products, for example. We use essentially one computer, the time-sharing one. We will, for example, optimize cake formulas to get the chewiest one 
we have a little problem occasionally measuring a thing like chewiness. The computer has an essential part in this because in doing a problem like this, you have a great many things to keep track of. The sugar is, can be changed, the flour can be changed, the water can be changed, and by the time you get about 10 or 12 things that can be changed, you have much too much for a single human mind to encompass. So you let the computer keep track of these for you. So it was absolutely essential that we work out a mechanical means of forecasting that was as accurate as anybody could determine by crystal balling simply because we have 87 to 88 different products that we have to forecast on a weekly basis and it's beyond the human endurance to do that on five locations. In order to provide management with data which represents the corporation as a whole, we wanted to get all the division's information needs into one computer system and one database. From this data, there can be distilled a picture of how this corporation is moving. Typical variables that would be involved in the profitability of, of some of our divisions would be commodity prices. Sugar is a typical one. Wheat is a major one. Soybeans, cocoa, chocolate. Now, this cannot be done without the database that provides you the uh, history and the current status of not only a division, but the corporation as a whole. We make natural wood finishes, which numbers about 400 different products. On the accounting end of it, I think like once a week we give the payroll to be signed. We'll have along with that the figures, the sales for the week, the production for the week, both in dollars and in gallon, which we never had before. And you know whether we're going ahead or behind, it's going to be timely reports. But this sort of regimen, I don't know whether it's good or bad. <laughs> We found out that as a byproduct of this thing, that when we're going to do this cost estimating, we have what we call a property card or property information that will be with each one of these products. So if a customer would come in and ask us to do this kind of work for us, we could take these cards and take them out to what the properties they were requiring. So we print it out in a short period of time that we would have all the formulas that we ever made or tried to make in front of a person to make a decision, well, gee, this is a product that we can use. Now, which one would be the best? Silverback Paper Company is the best example I know of a true distributor. We buy some 2,000 different manufacturers. We sell to at least 150,000 different customers in the western part of the United States, some 80 to 100,000 different products. Uh, as far as our online order processing system is concerned, we have on our central computer this database record that consists of thousands, somewhere between 50 and 60,000 customer records that contain not just information on the customer's name and address and where to deliver the merchandise, but every piece of credit and accounts receivable data as well. And in some locations, such as one of our southern locations, uh, we have the necessity of transmitting approximately 4,000 orders a day into our central system. Well, 4,000 orders a day uh, make up approximately uh, 25 to 30,000 lines of input information. And when we transmit that picture of an order back to the division, it obviously contains many more characters of information than were transmitted in for order entry purposes. We could be transmitting back 10 times the amount of data. So this required a communication system that would not only be able to handle this type of volume from one location, but also simultaneously be able to handle uh, volumes of varying degrees from 15 to 20 distribution centers. Another part of it was, of course, the warehouse control. Uh, here is where we felt that uh, we are able to effect tremendous savings. But with computer control, the computer can then produce an order picking document that can go out in the warehouse and route the warehouseman through the warehouse in the shortest distance possible and bring that man automatically to the location of the stock. We, in conjunction with General Electric, assisted in the development of the SimCon system, the scientific inventory management system, which was, we felt, ideal to our particular operation because of the large number of items and the large number of transactions and a large number of customers, which lent itself very well to statistical forecasting and statistical inventory management tools. We have a central operation of time sharing in Tonawanda, New York. From this location, we service entire United States. 
we have about 50 physical terminals. For example, an engineer may be involved in design of a chemical plant. Then through the terminal, he may introduce the input parameter in a matter of seconds. He get the result which you need to take him on to the next step in this engineering plant design process. We also have an application in, in our ocean systems division whereby if a diver has bends troubles, they immediately take them back down again to a certain depth, and that depth is fed into our time-sharing computer, and then this will give information as how they can bring them back up to the surface and eliminate or reduce the effect of the bends. Basically, we are making an expanded vinyl material used for upholstery. And as soon as a given run is completed, we immediately put the input into the computer and get a feedback right back. We use the computer to keep our day-to-day -day records and efficiency on a run-to-run -run basis. Rather than getting figures at the end of the week, as soon as we've made a run, we're able to determine our material efficiencies and also things concerning our weight and gauge of product. The sample is taken to the spectrographic laboratory and they run an analysis of the slug and this is reported back to us. And we type this analysis plus our present bath weight into the computer and it gives us back the material that we need to finish the heat at a desired chemistry and a desired tap weight. And here again is the beauty of time sharing. An individual engineer technician who has an idea or who has a, a formula can test it. You can have a quick response to an idea. company is a major forest products company serving the entire United States and 18 foreign countries. The computer telecommunication system is based on a centralized computing concept serviced by over 170 teletype and high-speed terminal locations throughout the United States. Six years ago, we started building a management information system to supply Warehouser with the capability of having a large database upon which they could draw and make good management decisions. Each of these terminals has the computing power of a very large computing system for doing its necessary processing for its business. We account for each log that is cut from the forest and processed either through our mills or sold to the market outside. From the tree through the mills, whether it be sold on the open market as a log or whether it be processed through the manufacturing processes, out to the market as a finished product. And we then are tracking the finished product. We do model building for strategic planning of where should we put a new plant site what should that plant site look like? This data is taken from many sources to provide for the model, and part of it comes from the database, from historical data, part of it comes from external marketing factors, and part of it comes from our financial community. We need the total information system for the company in order to not only do our accounting and operations control, but to provide management with the information they need for strategic decision making. We have the 635s tied into the vehicle, which is on the pad for the checkout, to verify the parameters and all the valves and functions and what have you is working properly. And by the time launch comes along, they have all these systems checked out where they feel like 100% sure that they're going to work. Well, for 506 with the Apollo 11, we displayed approximately 4,000 different parameters. And we recorded approximately somewhere between 5 and 6,000 for post-test processing. And the 4,000 was for real-time display. These included pressures, temperatures, vibrations, ground measurements that run prior to liftoff. And on the launch, when we start the launch countdown, our support, the 600s are required like uh, about 30 hours prior to launch. And we're supporting continuously around the clock. And then we follow it until we have lost the signal. And then we have the uh, worldwide net that's tied into the CIF that comes through uh, 635s. And we process these data from various stations around the globe. 
the IU, for example, the guidance goes on quite a while. They're interested in this guidance at that time to see if they've obtained the uh, correct orbits and the velocities and accelerations are performing correctly. We'll obtain the thousand seconds of history type data, and if something goes wrong, he can call up this parameter for the past thousand seconds and look at it and see where it started going wrong and see if it had correlation to some other parameters over that span and it helps them to see if they can figure out what the problem is. It could eliminate reschedule of running the launch, in fact. In our system, we have the nominal trajectory that scientists have calculated that this vehicle should fly. And then as the vehicle is launched, we actually plot the actual flight versus the theoretical that we have, and we can tell readily from the monitors that we display this on how much it's varying from the normal. Engineers can tell readily if it's achieving the correct orbit right velocities, all the cutoffs, the different staging, and what have you. Fisher-Price is the world's largest producer and marketer of preschool toys. Our marketing activities are worldwide, and last year we shipped to some 60 locations around the world. Well, with a rather diverse line of about 70 toys and thousands of customers, we have problems of obtaining the information we need for planning purposes and control purposes in the sales field. We now have a relatively new report which shows in terms of pieces rather than dollars, units in other words, exactly how many they have sold for each month of the year and accumulative for the year to date in their entire territory. We can tell for the first time, thanks to the computer, what is selling in what part of the country, something we never knew before. And we can now take remedial action. We can pinpoint the salesman's activities so that they put their effort where it is of most value to us in the short and the long run. We also have found considerable application for the computer in just keeping track of the many millions of parts that we have in our operations to make toys. When you make 30 million toys and you figure that each toy has up to 30 or 40 parts to it, you can immediately see the millions of pieces that we have to keep track of. Eight or nine thousand different pieces in quantities ranging from a few hundred thousand up to several millions of each of those parts. As you can see from our toys, they take many parts that have to be brought together in a certain sequence, fastened together, and then move on down for the application of other to the ultimate completion of the toy. And there are various relationships, number of pieces, and the operations that it takes to put these together. And this whole relationship can be handled by IDS. By knowing and giving the computer these relationships, they are maintained, and we're able to then use these to explode bills of material to get parts requirements. We're able to determine the loads on our various machine centers because of the relationships maintained by IDS. And we're able to take common parts and various other items that have uses throughout, and because they are linked back together, by IDS, we can know our net material requirements. I even visualized the idea of terminals at a businessman residence. In my youth, I looked on space travel as being something that probably would not happen in my lifetime. I visualized computers as being somewhat the same way. I can visualize the computer becoming as common as our telephone, our car, our electricity, the next generation will see the computer evolve into an integral part of our daily life.